Well, look what we got here. This is a 16-bit ADC with an amplifier, and it's it's from Adafruit. They've got a breakout board for a chip, and we're going to be looking at the chip and looking at how they put it together and and looking at all the interesting aspects to it. But what I what really intrigued me was it was 16-bit. And we'll look at the sample rate. You know how fast can you take samples? Usually on a 16-bit, it's going to be a, a Delta Sigma uh, amp, uh, ADD converter, and it won't be that fast. But usually that doesn't matter when you're wanting that. And um, and it's got an amplifier built in. We'll see if that's a programmable gain amplifier to see if we can uh, give it different values and and. Uh, uh, on that and see if that can go directly to an Arduino or do we need to uh, do we need to design our own amplifier which we've got as you've seen in the previous videos we've got uh, designs for that we can do that we can handle that here with the BRM blog and here's the board and let's see I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that. That is, uh, oops, excuse me. I have that upside down. That is the 16-bit I squared C ADC plus PGA programmable gain amplifier. And that's the ADS1115. So we know what to look up. That's the chip we're going to look up. And there's our outputs. It looks like some address bits. We've got our our clock and our data on our I squared C address. And we've got these four down here. Four address bits. Not sure what those do. We'll look at that in VCC and ground. So let's take a look at that a little closer. First of all, I'm going to solder in these uh, headers here, and you've seen me do that before. I don't. There's no reason to to film that. You've seen me do that before. I just put this into a. I'll cut it to length to the proper number of pins, and uh, put that in a breadboard. Fit this over it, and then solder them in, and then we'll have that done. So once I get that done, we'll be back. Well, I don't know how well you can see those solder joints. I looked at them under the microscope, and they look pretty good. I cleaned them up with flux clean, and uh, as you can see from there, that's it's just the one side that you put them on, put the uh, he pin headers on, and uh, we've got the, our chip there. That's going to be our ADS one 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 five chip, and then they got some uh, components out here for. My guess for filtering, for uh, decoupling of the power supply, one thing or another, but we'll find out. It's an ADC 16-bit converter, and so we're going to see what it can do. And I just built it. I didn't have a, a I'm, I'm using my breadboards right now, but I have this uh, Arduino prototype breadboard, so I just used it. Worked, worked fine. Uh, and so I think we're uh, we're good to go to insert it in, put it in a circuit and power it up. Okay, I guess you can call me a, an Adafruit fanboy. That's that's what I am. It's just I respect companies that look at a product from the point of view of their customer, and Adafruit does that. Uh, they get it. They get what the customer, who their customer is, and they target their products for that customer and they target the the help that they provide knowing what the customer is going to need uh, out in the field and if I were going to put 16-bit uh, converters into a product uh, you know and and I didn't and I didn't want to do the gain myself and I didn't want to build the board myself and and that sort of thing and I and I wasn't constrained by budget to that degree uh, you know I would buy this board you know I haven't we haven't messed around with it yet but I'm just giving an example uh, buy this board incorporate it in your product and let this work be done uh, by someone else 
and uh, and then you do in your product you do what it is you, that makes your product unique and first thing I want to show you what I did to alter their uh, alter their code and they have the suggestions in there is this is the 16-bit version that I purchased so uh, I enabled or uncommented this line here this Adafruit ADS 1115 uh, ADS use this for the 16-bit version so I uncommented that since we have the 16-bit version I mean who wants that 12-bit rubbish anyway let's see and then setting these, um, and, I've, and I've decided to go single-ended, at least initially. And then, but I definitely want to do differential, uh, differential reading. But I want to go single-ended first, and just get a feel for how this thing operates. But getting a single-ended reading, uh, they show the range, blah blah blah. Uh, the ADC input. Basically, I, what I did is I uncommented the code where you see the cursor flashing that is a gain of one. And that gain of one takes us to plus or minus 4.096 volts. One bit equals uh, 0.125 millivolts on the 16 bit. That's pretty good. Now you can go all the way down with a 16 gain. Uh, but you got to be careful you can only have an input of plus or minus 0.256 volts so a quarter of a volt but you can get a resolution of 0.0078125 millivolts so you can get a very high resolution as long as your input voltage requirements aren't that much you know what I mean not that high so that's what I've set it to I downloaded this code of course from their from their github and uh, and just made the mods in there to, to fit what we're doing and then looks like they're going to output I'm gonna have a single ended and I'm gonna go into ADC 0 so we're just gonna have probably one output with that AIN 0 we'll just see that one output on the screen when we when we crank up the monitor so let's let's build the hardware up and uh, see what this puppy does. This is the unit. Uh, it's got the uh, headers all soldered in and uh, cleaned up and I put it in a breadboard. We have our power here our 0 to 5 volts is going to be here or 5 volts and ground is going to be here. That's what's going to power it. And then we're going to have I wonder if we can see that. No, I don't think you can see that. But basically, we're going to have an analog input in A0, which is right there. A0, and then I've got a couple of wires coming over from an Arduino, the one that I'm programming, uh, SCL and S SDA for our I squared C data. And we're going to see if that, that's a minimum configuration to try to get this thing working and see if we can get some figures out of it so let's do that I'm gonna be doing some wiring here you probably don't want to see that I'm just gonna be running some uh, DuPont wires from one place to another so let me get that done and I'll be back just wanted to show you we're hooked up and I've got a voltmeter going into A0 analog 0 which is the analog input that we're going to be um, uh, putting in our voltage our test voltage I've got a voltmeter in there just to verify what's coming out of the signal generator you know is accurate because uh, we're going to use the signal generators DC capability to uh, to put in a voltage into this and we've got these two wires coming over here that's our SDA and our SCL that's our I squared C and then I've just got a common ground for between the Arduino and the circuit and that is it. Uh, I did what I did was I grounded A1, A2, and A3, the, the other three analog 
inputs. I grounded those just to, because uh, uh, they had noise on them, <clears throat> just to keep the confusion down when we, when we look at the, uh, what A0 is doing. And we don't see these numbers popping all over the place. Because when they're floating, you get numbers everywhere. So I grounded those just to, just to bring those down to zero. And uh, let's see. So that's the circuit. I'm not sure if you can see that. That looks washed out on my LCD monitor here. Uh, but I'm putting out one volt out of the signal generator. And that, that is currently going to the uh, ADD converter. And just as a check on that, we see that uh, it's, it, and I'm measuring at the AD, A to D converter with the BK Precision multimeter, and we are putting out one volt. And it's 1.0022, but it's one volt. It's good for our, for our purposes. So that's what we're using to, uh, for our tests. And look what we're getting out. We're getting out, uh, I'm getting fuzzy there. Had it good. We're getting out, uh, out of A0, ignore A1, 2, and 3, those are all tied to ground. And you, you'll get that, you'll get a negative 1 or negative 2 or something. But A, uh, AIN0 is the one where we're putting in 1 volt and we're getting out at approximately 8,000. Now we're, now we're saying, okay, now why are we getting 8,000? Well, if we divide the millivolts that he's seeing and we multiply by the bits, it's gonna, that's, what it's, that's about what it's going to equal to. And here we'll, we'll see that. We'll see that here in just a second. Okay, this is how this works. When you have... Let me clear out everything here. When you have 2 to the 15th power, which is what we've got here, you've got, that's how many, um, 2 to the 15th is 32,768. So that's, that's how many levels that we have, how many values that we have within our voltage range. Well, what's our voltage range? Well, it's 4.096 volts. So let me put that in memory. What is that? Memory set. Clear. And if we say 4.096 volts divided by our total number of bits that we can have what we're looking for is a how many volts per bit are we looking for memory recall there it is right there that is one two three that's point one two five millivolts or hundred and twenty five microvolts however you want to look at that look at that now what did we put in we put in one volt which I won't show you that. We're, we're going to come back to the calculator. I won't show you that. But we're getting out, we put in one volt and we're getting out 8,000 here. We're putting in A0 and we're getting out 8,000, a count of 8,000. So why are we getting that count of 8,000? Well, if we can get back to the calculator. Um... If we multiply, this is on a per bit basis. So if we multiply this by 8,000, on a per count basis rather, times 8,000, 2, 3, equals, guess what? 1 volt. So we're, we're spot on. We're getting we're getting uh, we're getting a count of eight thousand, which is equivalent to which is telling us the ADD converter is telling us that eight thousand is one volt. Now you can take that eight thousand, and you know programmatically you can turn that into anything you want. You can turn that into voltage or an arbitrary count or whatever you want. But knowing that it's accurate and knowing that you're getting uh, 0.125 millivolts per bit really helps you out and it helps you out in in your program uh, to have confidence that 
that uh, you can, uh, uh, if you got a value of 500 coming across there, you just do your multiply and you know how much volt that you got. And, uh, okay, let's play around with this a little bit. You can see, you can see the calculator. Can you see the number underneath? See that number underneath? I don't know if you can see both of those. Well, I'll just bring the calculator in if needed. But right now, you can see 8,000. Now, I'm going to go to 2 volts. <clears throat> Plunk, I just jumped straight up 2 volts. Well, guess what? We get 16,000. It's exactly what we would expect. It would be double, double what we had... Now we know our limitation here is 4.096 volts, so we don't want, I'm not going to go over 4 volts. We go to 3, we're going to have 24,000. We go to 4, we're going to have 32,000. And that's the limit of, that's our 2 to the 15th power, 2 to the power of 15th uh, limit that we have here. Now if you want to get if I was reading correctly, if you want to get the 2 to the 16th power, then you use the differential mode, which we're going to play with. And uh, we'll find something to, uh, to measure. We'll find something to measure across there. Maybe a low ohm resistor or something. This would be where you would have... You would have a... a you, you could have a shunt resistor reading your current and going through an amplifier and through a buffer and then put that out through into this uh, as, as a differential and uh, do a good job of reading accurately uh, the current that was going through something. It's a bit just, I'm stuck on currents right now. I'm stuck on, as you know, going through reading small currents. So that's the first thing I think of. So isn't that interesting? So as we kind of wheel down through there we I'm just going down through 2.7 2.5 2.4 and we can see that we can get uh, let's see I wonder how low can we go 100 now we know this generator when it says 10 millivolts it's not really 10 millivolts we've seen that before but 10 millivolts is putting out well actually the multimeter is saying 10 millivolts okay alright so he's putting out 10 millivolts we're saying 80 80 81 in our uh, um, in our uh, coming out of A0 there so if we look at our, let's see, can you do that, calculator? And if we look at, we clear him out, and we say, Divided by memory recall equals, and what are we getting coming out of there? We're getting coming out of there is 80. So if I multiply that by 80 times 80, what does that give us? That gives us 1, 2, 3. It gives us 10 millivolts. So we're reading accurately. 10 millivolts coming from the signal generator and the multimeter is uh, is uh, um, backing us up on that it is 10 millivolts it's actually 10.15 millivolts but 10 millivolts now can we get down to 1 millivolt uh, 
Let's see. I don't have a lot of confidence in this signal generator to get that low. There's three, one. There's one millivolt. What's coming out? 11. So we have 11 coming out of the 10 coming out of there. 10, 11. And, uh, but my multimeter is reading one and a half millivolts. So actually, actually we're we're reading one, one we're actually what what the ADC is seeing is one and a half millivolts. But if we run that through our formula, sorry, I have to go through this every time. Three oh nine. Sorry, you're not seeing that. 4.096 clear entry 4.096 divided by memory recall equals and then if we multiply that by 10 Two, three. We're seeing 1.25 millivolts. Well, it's we're seeing uh, the multimeter is telling us 1.45. The sig gen is telling us one millivolt. So we're we're getting down now in kind of a little bit of the noise. So 1.1.25 millivolts is is good enough for us. So we can see this is pretty accurate. This is a good 16-bit converter. And it's all handled over I squared C, easily readable uh, via programming, and then you can use it in in whatever manner you need need uh, to read this kind of accuracy and this kind of uh, uh, this kind of precision and accuracy. And we could put different voltages into each one of these. Oh, I'm sorry. I just whiz off there, start talking. And into A0, A1, A2, and A3. So you can have four going at the same time, or you can have a differential and which reads between zero and one or two and three. So you can have two differential inputs or a single input. So we're going to work on a differential input. I think we've looked and, and are pretty happy with the single ended input. It, it took us all the way up to four volts, all the way down to one millivolt, and uh, fairly reliably with our with our accuracy and our precision.